Hello and welcome. So this is just going to be a quick video showing you how we can use Dead Reckoning when flying VFR. If you're not sure what Dead Reckoning is or how to use it, please see my tutorial video on it here. The link is also in the description for mobile users. But I'm guessing that most people have just come from there, so let's get on with it. So today I'm starting in North Uist, an island off the west coast of Scotland, and I'm currently flying around Benbecula Airport. Let's say that I want to fly up here to Stornoway, a bit further north. The weather is nice today, but it is kind of cloudy. We could get there using pilotage alone, maybe if we follow this coastline along here, but let's try to get there directly. So here's my five step guide for dead reckoning that I made. So step one, plan the leg, make a note of the course and distance. So I'm going to jump onto skyvector.com to find this. Here's our island. What to do is left click on the dot and click the plan button next to the airport. The other options are for radio navigation, which we'll cover in a different video. Then we head up to Stornoway and do the same there. Now you'll see that a pink line is drawn between the two airports. This is our leg. And you can see that it gives us the details of the, uh, the leg as well. So the course is 041 degrees and the distance is 55.2 nautical miles. So let's make a note of these. Don't worry about the ground speed on the flight plan just yet. We'll come back to that. Also, don't worry about the not for navigation disclaimer. I think they mean it's not to be used for real world navigation, but for flight simming, this is perfect. Step two, decide on your indicated airspeed and altitude and use those to calculate your true airspeed. So in the Cessna, uh, a comfortable cruise speed is about 100 knots indicated and a safe altitude for flying over these islands and mountains is about 3000 feet. What we need to do now is use an E6 computer and calculate the true airspeed. I like to use this one on csgnetwork.com. Enter the numbers and it, we get a true airspeed of 106 knots, so make a note of that. Step 3, find out the wind speed and direction. So I got these numbers when I was setting up the flight in the simulator. When selecting the weather I chose the real world weather and then once it downloaded it gave me this screen here and you can see the wind details at the bottom. So the wind is coming in from a direction of 286 and it's blowing at 8 knots. Again, this is something we need to make a note of. Step 4, calculate the heading and ground speed. So we head back to the E6B to work out what heading we need to fly and what our ground speed will be. So we need the calculator here which says heading, ground speed and wind correction angle. Type in the numbers that the calculator needs and it will give us the numbers that we need. So make a note of the heading that we need to fly which is 037 and our ground speed will be 109 knots. And then finally step 5, work out how long it will take to fly this lake. So if we jump back into Sky Vector now, we can simply enter the ground speed on the flight plan here, 109 knots, and it will calculate the time for us. In this case, it's 30.4 minutes, or 30 minutes and 24 seconds. Okay, so we're back in the plane just now. Um, up ahead of us there we have uh, Bimbecular Airport. Uh, and what I'm going to do just now is I'm just going to climb up to 3,000 feet and try and get ourselves settled at 100 knots before we, uh, before we reach the airport there. And what I'm going to do also is actually going to cheat a little bit and use the, um, uh, use the autopilot there. Because um, what that will allow me to do is just make sure that the plane um, stays at the right altitude and the right heading, and it just gives it gives us more accurate control of the plane, so to speak. Um, so when we uh, when we sort of fly over the airport, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, also start a stopwatch as well, uh, and the stopwatch in the Cessna is actually available over here next to the clock. So what to do is if you click on the select button once. You see the clock switches to a um, sort of a, a stopwatch there, and then what you do is you click the uh, the control button right beside it, and uh, that will start it. And then obviously from our calculations, we know that after about 30 minutes, uh, we should be over our next fix, which will be Stornoway. <coughs> so I don't think I'll be able to see the airport as I pass over, unfortunately, but. Um, you know, there's a little stretch of coastline there, which is pretty much, <coughs> excuse me, pretty much um, is right off the end of the runway. So I'll just keep an eye out for that. So 
so 2,500 just just now. Um, the speed might be a bit low as we start the uh, the journey, but that's okay as long as um, the majority of the journey is done at our planned speed, then that's the main thing. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn just now, um, so I'll activate heading hold just there. And yeah, you can see the uh, the airport just underneath us there. So we're turning on to our uh, heading of zero three seven degrees just now. I've already uh, had it sort of pre uh, pre marked on the um, on the heading indicator there. So just let the plane settle onto that, and then just as we hit three thousand feet now, just let the, the sorry the plane accelerate to uh, one hundred knots. Centered there. So what I'll do is I just need to look down just so I can uh, see how fast the engine is running. Cool, and that's us um, sort of established now on our leg. So um, what we're going to do for your convenience? Uh, oops, sorry, I forgot also to start the stopwatch there. Oops. <laughs> So uh, yeah, so what um, what I'll do for your convenience now is I'll uh, I'll just speed up the video. Um, so uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy. So this is Doofer from the future. Um, what I had planned to do was show the entire flight, but sped up. However, my uh, video editing software doesn't allow me to uh, to speed up the video as fast as I wanted to. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut the video here and you'll see the flights just as we get towards the end of our leg. Hello and welcome back. So we're just about 29 minutes into our journey and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just start this ending just now just to make sure we uh, get down and out of the clouds. So um, just disable the autopilot altogether and bring the throttle back. And you may have caught it passing out the side of the screen. But if I turn over in this direction, there we have Stornoway Airport. And if you don't believe me, uh, keep an eye on the air traffic control here. We have Stornoway Approach there, and nearest airport list. And we have Stornoway. So there you have an example of uh, Dead Reckoning in action. And um, that flight also was actually quite a good, um, uh, quite a good example of how you can have a VFR flight yet have your vision impaired by things such as clouds for example so um, so uh, there you have it. So as I said this was just a quick video um, once again you can find my tutorial on dead reckoning here on the left and on the right is the next video in my tutorial series looking at modding FSX. Thanks for watching, catch you later.